You're watching Let's Chat. As we continue on this Monday morning, August 3rd, we have some financial issues to talk about. Some people are saying this is a great time in certain areas of the economy. Some folks are saying quite the opposite. Let's find out exactly where the truth is with Chris Hopkins. Chris is the Senior Vice President with Barnett and Company. Chris Hopkins, good morning. Good morning, Chip. How are you today? I'm doing very well. Chris, we hear everything about the economy literally in every 360 degrees of the circle. Um, I know the gross domestic product has taken a big dive and the biggest one in history. Fill us in and tell us exactly what that means. Sure. The answer to your question is yes. I mean, it's good and, and, and we're struggling both. So uh, the first step is the, the GDP, the measure of the output for the U.S. economy declined by about 33% on an annualized basis, year over year, biggest, biggest decline ever. So that's the, kind of the bad news. The good news is we expected that. We knew that was gonna happen once we shut the economy down to try to deal with the COVID outbreak. So it wasn't a big, huge surprise. It was, uh, you know, it's still a pretty shocking number, but uh, it looks like we're beginning to climb out of the hole. So that's the first thing is it was, it was pretty big and it looks like maybe by, first quarter of next year, maybe second quarter, we'll be back at about the same level that we started in January. So that's the good news. What has the prudent prudent investor done when they saw this coming on and where should they be now? Well, that's a great question. So if you had cash, uh, the best thing you could have done was put it in about March or April mm -hmm. uh, when everybody was running away, when the market was down. Now we've learned that lesson over and over again. If you weren't in cash uh, and you were already fully invested, then the best thing you could have done was nothing. Uh, it was too late to react once you'd had the big decline. And as we always say, the best, if you have a long-term plan, you have a reasonable asset allocation, you stick with it. And, and frankly, the, uh, the broad indexes, in particular the S&P 500, are really very close to where we started the year. So... And the same advice applies over and over again. Have a plan, stick with the plan, don't panic, don't sell at the bottom, and time will take care of it. Housing. It seems yes. like the housing market now is just probably the best it's ever been. Money is cheap, sales are strong, refinancing yep. is taking hardly any time at all. And we're seeing record time of house for sale, house sold, house closed, new family in. Tell us about that. Yep. No, exactly. It's uh, been actually a real bright spot in the economy. It's been the surge in the housing market. The uh, the June numbers, we don't have July yet. June numbers were up 21% year over uh, over the same uh, month the year before. Um, yes, you, you're exactly right. We're at historic lows. You can now get a 30-year mortgage with good credit uh, below 3%. Now, you and I probably remember the days of 14% mortgages. And, right. You know, we refinanced down to 10 and we thought we had it made. So this is a really remarkable period of time. So housing is strong. And one of the reasons that really matters, Chip, is that uh, the housing industry, whether it's mortgages, it's construction, it's sales, it's insurance, uh, adds up to somewhere between 15 and 20 percent of the U.S. economy. It's a significant contributor uh, to the growth of the economy. So a strong housing market is fundamental. And this is very good news that, that the market strength has has really continued and surprised us, to be right. honest. Chris, I only have 60 seconds or so less, but I wanted to get this in. You're seeing signs everywhere about institutions can't buy coins because of COVID. Yeah. So we're looking at a national coin shortage. Right. I'm not sure what to think about all this. <laughs> well, started out with toilet paper and then you went to uh, to meat and now we're coins. Well, right. the fact is, think think about you shut the economy down. So everybody stays home. So they're not at the laundromat. They're not, you know, they're not the vending machines and so forth. That so the the circulation of coins in the economy declined dramatically because ec economic activity closed down. Now you and I would probably say, okay, so what's the big deal? Is use your ATM card. Well, about 20% of Americans don't have a bank relationship and they right. don't have access to any kind of touchless transactions. So the fact of the matter is, there's not technically a shortage of coins, but 
the circulation declines so rapidly that Got there's it. a temporary Got shortage. It. All right, Chris, thank you so much for sharing your time and expertise with us. And as always, have a good week. In touch with Chris Hopkins at Barnett and Company, their website, barnettandcompany.com.